Hello there and welcome everyone. In this video I want to talk about a few languages that are slowly but relentlessly dying. So the next time you see a job advertisement for one of these uh, languages or more of these languages you know that it's going to be a legacy thing. So some maintenance on some old website or software. And the support on these languages is not going to be even that great because Stack Overflow, you know, when few people use the language doesn't have many answers. True story. Okay, these are not in particular order, so I'd say let's start from number one, which is Perl. It was originally founded in 1987, but it has undergone quite several changes in the course of its life. And actually now, Perl is two different languages that, believe it or not, are meant for different purposes. I'm referring to the Perl branch, which is the one discussed here, and the Perl 5 branch, let's say. So what is it? It's a general purpose uh, scripting language, mainly used for Unix system and can be used for creating some system administration or network administration, even entire like graphical user interfaces. So why is it dying? Well, first and foremost, Perl is actually a pretty old language. And since the split, let's say with Perl 5, it has received little to no attention nor support and it has been replaced by well its counterpart and other languages that do similar things like python for instance perl is not a useless language and in its own way what it does it does it well but in the tech world when you stop innovating and updating the language is doomed to just fade out and be replaced by the new kids on the block second on the list is objective c now this is a good one uh, it appeared in the early 80s and it was quite popular at the time and i think those who know it or have heard about it it's thanks to next which is the company started by steve jobs in 1985 and that 10 years later was merged into apple itself and so steve jobs getting back as CEO with a vengeance. I mean, what a story. Now the language itself is similar to C, it's a bit simpler and also it's object oriented, hence the name. From the history that I've just told you, it's pretty clear why it was so popular like after 1996. Because from that point, it was the main language used for creating the then new Mac operating system. And to be honest, as far as I'm concerned, I have only heard about Objective-C when it comes to Apple systems, Apple applications. So why is it dying? Well, as in all things, people, especially engineers, tend to improve upon stuff. And in 2014, Apple engineers came out with Swift, which is now the language for Mac OS, iOS, and iPadOS. Everything related to the uh, Apple ecosystem and they even offer it natively in all their Macs. I mean if you ever heard of Xcode that is basically an editor and an environment for for developing your Apple applications. For those familiar with Android it's basically Android Studio but it works better because it's native. This being said Objective-C is no longer required and for those of you who would like to learn iOS development I'd say don't listen to those people who say yeah bro learn Objective-C I mean it's all based on that. It is, but not anymore. The support is not there and the complexity is not worth it. Learn Swift instead. You'll thank me later. CoffeeScript. The name is confusing, but revealing. CoffeeScript is basically a compiler for JavaScript. It was meant to simplify things and prettify the syntax of JavaScript, but it basically compiles directly into JavaScript. Although the idea was good, I mean, JavaScript at the time, and I'm talking about 2009, 2010, wasn't the language that we all know and love today. It had some rough edges, some long overcomplicated stuff. And CoffeeScript was meant, and it in fact it did, was meant to simplify that thing. But as a language, CoffeeScript is not really flexible. And it is also quite weird because there is no scope, no delimiters, and it has created a sort of indifference among programmers. And now that TypeScript is here, well I say now but it just three years younger than CoffeeScript. The love and interest of programmers has been captivated by, by TypeScript. Especially, but I think I've said it many times on this channel, for the implementation of types. There is some weird fetish among programmers for statically typed languages. I don't know. Haskell. Founded in 1990, it is a statically typed functional programming language. Despite being quite academic, meaning used in the universities, and good practice, learning Haskell is used for basically nothing else. Sure, there will be something 
still rely on Haskell, but it doesn't have nearly the support and interest by the tech community that unfortunately is needed to push a language forward. You might have heard of this language as old and not very used, so this doesn't come to anyone's surprise. But believe it or not, there are still some job listings looking for developers, Haskell developers, not joking. Now, personally, I would not want that job, but the competition is very low, so if you want to try, just feel free to do it. R. Oh, I'm so excited about this one because, and I know I'm not meant to you know, give personal judgments, but I hate this language. Of course, as all languages has its own perks and advantages, but R is super complicated, unnecessarily complicated. And when I try to understand it, I try to learn R. And when I try it, I tell you, it's just, it didn't click. Anything clicked. It is probably the weirdest one I've seen. There is really nothing in common with the other let's say more human-friendly languages. And as a language, it is used primarily, I should say maybe exclusively, for data analysis. As of now, R is basically being replaced totally or maybe partially by other languages. And one that comes to mind immediately is Python. You can do so much more with it and the syntax is way, way more readable. Of course, there are still things that can be executed only with R, Especially when using combination with SQL, you can really generate some powerful queries and some light data processing, let's say. But overall, in my opinion, the language is not worth the time. And I'm happy that fewer and fewer companies are requesting it. Now, there are some honorable mentions in this list that I'm just gonna skip over very quickly because of obvious reason. But uh, let's say number one is Pascal and Visual Basic. You might not know them, but they are basically coming from the Microsoft ecosystem and they are completely, let's not say useless, but they are totally dying. Also because of something that Microsoft did. Uh, they created C Sharp, which is now the, I think the, the main language for Microsoft systems. Funnily enough, Pascal was the first language that I ever learned. I totally forgot it, but funny enough. Another honorable mention is Java. Now, I know I'm already seeing loads and loads of critiques in the comments saying, look, bro, Java, are you kidding? I know this is more of a personal opinion, but the fact is that Java is dying very slowly. It doesn't seem like it, but it's dying. There are so many things that Java does that can be done with other languages that are basically popping out almost every year. Java is becoming redundant. Think about mobile development. Now you can use Kotlin and it's way, way hotter. Actually. or for web development you have Scala. I mean, think about it. Okay, this last one is a bit of a mix between objectivity, objectively it is dying, slowly fading out, and personal opinion. I'm talking about PHP. Now PHP is a very well-known language and it is known as the language that runs the web, that still runs the web. Most of the website nowadays still rely on PHP and its powerful framework, which is Laravel. PHP is a fairly simple language meant to build server-side applications where you can handle logic, authentication, routing, etc. One of the most known CMS is WordPress and it's entirely based on PHP. So you might hear somewhere someone say that you can make a ton of money just learning PHP and becoming like creating this WordPress templates. Even though this might be true in part, it still doesn't take away from the fact that PHP is dying. I can assure you that there is no company trying to upgrade or improve their code base or even startups that choose PHP as their fundamental language, as their core language, not even as a side language. For the web, now you have JavaScript and TypeScript that allow with just one language basically deal with the front end so the client side and the service side as well at the same time with one language which is a bit the concept of php but they are more flexible they're more maintainable maintained and supported so if i were you in 2022 i wouldn't start from php actually i would just leave it aside it has been great the journey has been amazing but you know you gotta know when to stop a small piece of trivia facebook was originally written in php now it is not anymore and you want to guess why okay this is it for this video if you enjoyed it leave a like and share 
and also subscribe. And in case you were wondering what the hottest languages are in 2022, well then, check this video, and I'll see you at the next one.